going on guys my name is Shinadu and this is my homie Elliot and welcome to the fourth wall podcast our first episode officially unofficially because we had another one before but yeah technical difficulties but it's all good technical. though uh today yeah, we're today we're talking all things NXT invasion along with uh NXT and AW predictions though because you guys know can't really talk about Smackdown so much because the way it's spaced out it's a little complicated though so we're gonna we're gonna work on that format to get all that content covered for you guys though but as for now NXT AW your thoughts Ooh, uh, so you can't talk about NXT right now without talking about this massive invasion angle they have going on. Definitely. The takeover of SmackDown was beautiful. By far, one of my favorite episodes on Fox from SmackDown was the NXT takeover episode. I agree. Um, the NXT takeover on Raw was a little bit more lackluster because, you know, they still had uh, storylines they needed to get across from the Raw characters. But... The things that they're doing with Adam Cole and uh, him getting put over by these big names, I think, was tremendous. Um, and then how they're kind of, every, you love to see Triple H. So anytime we get to yep. see Triple H, you know, it's, it's even more of a win. And you throw in a little Shawn Michaels in there, even better. Um, the talent that the uh, NXT roster has right now is incredible. Matt Riddle, uh, Keith Lee. Um, can't think of uh, the guy that uh, Keith Lee is uh, feuding with right uh, now. Dominic Dajakovic. Yeah, yes, that name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they have a full list of full superstars that you can't, I can't even think to say hey, you can even throw uh, Finn Balor in there because uh, he's there now. But I can't even say that NXT is now the underground version of WWE. They're right up there with uh, the the top eight shows. Uh, honestly, uh, I'll have to I'll have to definitely wholeheartedly agree with you on this one. Uh, the the way that they got the NXT talent over on SmackDown, I felt was such a flawless job because without multiple video packages or like 15, 20 minute in ring promos, they got over so much talent. The way they got over Bianca Belair, if you guys if you guys didn't see the Bianca Belair angle where she just beat the crap. Out of Dana Brooke and bench pressed Carmella, like over like the over like the little the uh, the storage units whatever like it was such an amazing sight to see though. like she it really looked like she was beating the crap out of the we were like oh my Bianca stop what are you doing she beat the crap out of these going guys in. going in and the fact that it was a clean sweep no shenanigans no foul play they were just the better athletes that Adam Cole Dan Bryan match I felt. It was a definitely contender for SmackDown match of the year, though, because I felt like at that point the best match I've seen on SmackDown of that era was uh, Roman Reigns versus Buddy Murphy because they tore the house down. In yeah, that match. No, they no. tore that house down. The, but that this, was, but uh, this particular match with Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan um, showcased exactly what a top talent like Daniel Bryan bringing up a new and younger talent is supposed to do. Yeah, you showcase their skills. Still get your stuff in and have the crowd literally. The crowd was in the palm of their hands the entire night. They were in it, and, and the fact too, and like it was good that Adam won clean because mm -hmm. like he didn't he didn't need to like any snags though because Daniel Bryan is so established that he can afford a clean loss. Yep. If anything, it'll just add to his character of okay, now we need to get re refocused and get back to the yes movement to be the Daniel Bryan that we know he can be. If, if anything, it just adds to that. And with uh, Seth Rollins, I felt the match wasn't as good as the Dan Bryan match, though, especially with the ending, though. But I understood why it had to end that way. You know? Yeah, um, yeah I'm still not happy about it. Uh, I feel like the. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're on this way with Adam Cole, put him over clean. I know that they're they're trying to play with this uh, idea that Seth Rollins could be going back to uh, to NXT, which would be cool. Yeah, I, that would probably put him back in a. Uh, in a much more cooler spotlight, if you will. Hey, by the way, has anybody seen Kevin Owens? I haven't seen him since he's a stunned AJ Styles and just disappeared. No, no, I, he is in limbo with the company, I think, right now. I don't know what, how he sees his future going with them. I know uh, he's voiced his opinion that he's not been happy yeah. lately. I mean, and I, and I don't blame him. Like, he literally was one of the most overstars on, on the brand on the, the company. They gave him the Stone Cold Stunner. Yeah, gave him the Stunner. And, and again, and like at that reunion, it should not have ended with Stone Cold having a reminiscent story. It should have ended with him 
and KO hitting some stunners on Shane, mm -hmm. and Stone Cold giving a beer salute toast, and you know, a, a somewhat passing the torch to KO to let them know, hey, this yep. is the guy. That would have sealed him as a top guy. The, mm -hmm. the nod from Austin, the beer toast from Austin on that ratings would have sealed him as a top guy, but they didn't do that. And right now, Owens isn't even on TV any like. Like I don't even know what's anything. going on with him. Uh, what brand is he supposed to be on now? Is he? I think Raw. I think Raw. See. Yeah, See, that's, that's another thing. Um, I know he was upset about the move from SmackDown to Raw. As he should have been. Um, yeah, because he, he was the hottest storyline on SmackDown for the longest time. And now they're trying to run with the, um, the Roman Reigns is our guy on SmackDown yeah. angle again. Yep. Yeah. Listen, this is nothing against Roman Reigns. Um, I personally like his character. You have to give recognition what recognition is doing. Kevin Owens bust his behind to get that white hot. Yeah. Um, he came up with something, it stuck, it worked, and for whatever reason, WWE has this uh, this neck for pulling the plug on on good stuff. You know, I don't I don't I don't I don't I get I honestly can't even think of the words to say. I mean honestly I I, I wholeheartedly agree though because in this whole in this whole angle right now it's it's just and with all this influx of NXT talent, now maybe now maybe KO could pop up later on. Maybe this could be a work to you know, get us, you know, to get us to forget about KO that way when he comes back in in some huge swerve angle, we'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. But as of now, I'm just looking at it like, I mean, like KO's one of your hottest guys and he hasn't been seen on TV re re relevantly in weeks. Yeah. Weeks. And I mean, but and but to go back to NXT though. But, it, so and, and then here's even my thing to this is my question to play devil's advocate. Without being a fan of Kevin Owens, have you been able to notice his absence um, through the storylines? Because yeah, it came up like it was it was an abrupt ending, but the show still has going on. Yeah, I you mean, know it's not like heck they've uh, they've even written these segments. Written they've even <laughs> wrote these segments. Uh, <coughs> Uh, to where you're not even really paying attention to, uh, you know, what's the the uh, the chronological order and how these things are happening. That's that's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, there's no consistency. <laughs> there's no consistency uh, yeah. in these storylines. Um, so you're kind of used to these little gaps and holes that they throw in. Yeah. You know, and Kevin Owens right now is just that gap and hole that uh, that, that one's gone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, I feel, I felt, you know, I, I felt, I feel him go jumping to NXT would, would, would do him some good, just because, oh, yeah. like, like, it, what, what Balor said, uh, he said Raw and SmackDown are like Hollywood, but NXT is Broadway. Yeah. Like, I completely understand, like, a guy like KO and Balor, they need an audience like NXT, and I, and I feel like if NXT were put in the same type of arenas as Raw and SmackDown, you know. Yeah. The, uh, him, Small Joe is another one Definitely. Um, that I felt like when I was watching him on NXT, how the crowd reacted to him uh, there versus how they kind of watered down the crowd mm -hmm. uh, on Raw and SmackDown. Like they chanted, Joe is going to kill you yeah. as he was coming out still yeah. looking menacing. Yeah, I, I remember there was a time where like the crowd would literally chant Shinsuke Nak Shinsuke's Nakamura's music like... Oh, I mean, literally, like the song would be over, and they're still chanting it. Yeah, like I mean, they're still kind of doing it, but when WWE turned him heel and threw the uh, the swerve in there with the lyrics and all that, they yeah. kind of gave him the night to stop doing it. Yeah, and and I understand because they wanted him to be the bad guy. So yeah. it was certain little meticulous moves like that that makes sense. But now, if you're listening to Shinsuke's music, they kind of toned down the lyrics just a little bit mm -hmm. to where you're still hearing that uh, that hard riff. Yeah. And I mean, interesting. I mean, and speaking of, of those guys, it'll be interesting to see going into SmackDown this week, though, uh, like how how they will respond to the NXT invasion because it's more so they invaded SmackDown when the top when the when the main when the full roster wasn't there, which right. I felt, of course, is a brilliant thing to do. So I mean, you you catch them with their pants down, oh, you catch them unaware. But it'll be good to see how Roman Reigns will respond. Nakamura, you know, is Roman Reigns being who he is, and Nakamura being uh, and Shinsuke being the IC champion. To see how they will respond individually in terms of like what they're gonna say, and as well as Bailey, because Bailey got leveled by Baszler. Ooh. I mean, I'm, I think that's gonna be a really good match. 
that's going to be a phenomenal. Survivor movie. Series is turning out to be oh, a yeah. hell of a ticket. And I'm liking too is that like it's not going to be the triple threat with the world champions in it because mm-hmm. I mean it's, it's going to be Brian. It's going to be Brian versus Mysterio. I mean uh, Rock versus Mysterio, which I I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see. Yeah, I want, I want to see that though, and uh, I feel they're gonna they're gonna give each uh, title match their own respective match. But I just you know I'm looking forward to seeing how they do the build. Uh, but I'm really excited about that triple threat between uh, 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 Bailey, Baszler, and uh, Becky. Yeah, that I mean, one's gonna be pretty awesome. And heel um, Bailey, I love heel Bailey, man. Like, I, I'm I'm liking the change. Yeah. It's, it, it's not even necessarily so much that it's the heel Bailey. Yeah. It's a changed Bailey. Yeah. And I, I mean, of course, I want her mic skills to improve, of course, so because yeah. I feel like she. I, but even with now the change, I think she's a little more relaxed. Yeah. To where she feel like she could probably push the envelope just a little bit, and you can tell Sasha Banks is kind of giving her that yeah that inspiration like push, push, yeah push. and 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 I must say too like I'm so happy that Sasha Banks is finally a heel she's mm-hmm. better at a heel you can tell I feel her like Randy Orton hate being a face yeah I feel being a heel and I don't know uh, Mercedes Renato Barnado if sorry if I'm saying your name wrong personally. But I feel that the heel is more closer to who she w- would be in real life. I feel she enjoys being a heel much more. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to say she's a bad person or anything no, like that. No, though, yeah, but, but you can tell that edge. You can tell where people really shine. Yes. Um, and in that space is uh, like I, I didn't. I started watching NXT post. Like she was there a little bit, but she was already on her way out. Yeah. Um, so I caught a little bit of uh, of heel Sasha Banks over there. Didn't really catch it too much because by the time they brought her uh, and the whole crew over yeah. to uh, the main roster, they were all just like bright uh, blue yeah. baby faces that they were trying to just get over. Know, Steph just literally just introduced them one at a time. Hey guys, this is this and this and this. Yep. And it's just, well, okay, well. Yeah. All righty. Well, I guess that writing team just gets the week off, okay? We get a, <laughs> we get a fat paycheck for doing nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know. And I'm kind of glad it happened like that because if you think about it, at that moment we didn't really have that many wrestlers as far as in the women's division. We had Natty who's still who's yeah. still there, um, and I, even her I think could use a little shift in character. Yeah, I I definitely agree. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree. You know, and um, and it was, was, was funny to, uh, to 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 bring back to, to to the NXT crew. Like I felt the women's division, I felt has never really suffered. The way it has on Raw and SmackDown, so I've always felt like since NXT's inception, they've always had phenomenal talent come through there. Mm-hmm. When it was Paige, Charlotte, uh, Banks, and uh, Bailey, to now you have Baszler, you have um, you have uh, yeah, you have yeah, Dakota you Kai got, in there. You got women that really Shirai. kick some ass. Yeah, <laughs> Bianca Belair. Listen, guys, Bianca Belair is gonna be a star. Okay, yeah. this girl, literally, her in ring and her the strength. This girl can bench press these other girls and just drop like and she's nothing. a baddie. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. You take that ponytail longer and let her hair just yeah. Montez, Q, uh, what's his name? Educated um, uh, Montez. Montez. Yes. Lucky, it, lucky, lucky dog, you. Real life you couple. Lucky real, dog. Real life married couple. Congrats to those guys too. And like and even says that dude's frog splash out this world. Dude. Out this world. Guy has like an eight pack. Something like that, literally. Like, why are you so shredded? Dude, this dude hasn't had a car since like 2000. I'm sure. There's you no know, way. He's just giving it to his tag team partner. And who his tag team partner is is just as charismatic as he is. Yeah. Like Street Profits, like, you know, for me, like, in terms of, like, uh, how they portray black superstars in the company, and I was still reeling off of Crime Time, which... Yo. I felt was the worst name gimmick to do to a black tag team that WWE has done to me in quite some time though because those Shag Asprey and JCG were both talented people mm-hmm. and and there's no it's no disrespect to them though because they have to work with what they're given that's how it works in WWE yep. and that's the thing too guys that's really how it works though because they've done this remember um what they call uh, they they did it to uh, to, to the Colognes they had them be uh, the Matadors yep and it's like that even though they're Puerto Rican. You know they do like it's all it's all, stuff like that like but I mean anytime you get a uh, a foreign guy he's yeah, a bad guy bad guy automatically you know like why and it's like but but with the street profits I do feel like at first I was like oh, why did these street profits why is it but, but like when you see them it, they it's it's charisma they're yeah. great they're, no like I'm not even upset at the name um because yeah. I when I first heard the name I was like uh, me too when I first heard I was like ah uh, uh, but now I, but 
I love it. Yeah, it's the street prophets. They yeah. they, they are prophets yeah. of the streets. And I and I and, and I truly enjoy them. And I, I I hope that they play like whether or not they'll be Raw NXT in this in thing. I mean, I, I know they'll go that deep into the storyline though because I know this is for Survivor Series. But I mean, now they're they're newly Raw. Yep. But they spent more time with NXT, and in the fans' eyes. It's still they're raw though, but there's still that transition to me though from NXT to Raw to me in my opinion. Yeah, the um, it's going to be very interesting to see the dynamic between how they implement the Street Profits in between that Raw and NXT yeah situation for Survivor Series. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, too. I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't been excited for a pay per view in a while. Uh, well, no, I take that back. I was excited for Hell in a Cell. Yeah, and they ran that straight to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Straight, oh man! You know you, they ran that. That I was excited for Hell in a Cell. Um, it's so wild because it's like if they would have done the Saudi Arabia ending at Hell in a Cell, that'd have been it'd been a great pay per view. It'd have been great. It 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 would have gotten an air across the board from a lot of platforms because, mm -hmm. like, you just look at it and you, you and you could tell that they were just trying to correct their wrong. Which hey, I'm glad you did, but the fact that you didn't have enough sense to know, hey, this is Hell in a Cell. This mm -hmm. is great. Why these guys? White hot right now. Mm -hmm. At this point, the Seth product as a face is not working. No, it's, it, uh, uh, and they should have had the wherewithal to yeah. make that call right yeah. then and there. And I like Seth, I really do. But like, he might have to go to Tyler Black for a while to get something. He he's, like, he's uh, put the gold streak back in. Something, yeah, something you do. You got to do something because it's not working. Because like his world title reign fuse were, were with Baron Corbin for the most part. That's. With AJ Styles on the roster, with Kevin Owens on the roster, with Shinsuke on the roster, mm -hmm. Baron Corbin. No disrespect to Baron Corbin either, but just no, and Baron Corbin, you you can. I, I'm starting to like his character. Yeah, no, I like him now. Now that but, they put uh, before, yeah, it was ugh, it was world side, ugh. and he was dressed like like he had the, the little the vest thing going, and it's like, why is he wearing this vest in the ring? Guys? Now, you know, you know what? It's funny. I think the vest would be more appropriate for his King of the Ring attire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that he's, now well, that he's King of the Ring, I think yeah, bring back the vest, Corbin. Yeah, but I think Natsu, man, you can tell Ben the gym. Oh yeah, definitely beefed up, man, and like and and just like I mean, because he has that wicked tattoo that they won't let him show. Yeah, because. He looks like CM Punk in the tunnel. Yes. That's why he had to get rid of that. And uh, shout out to him and Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman, if you look at his his transformation, oh. this dude got shredded for real. Yeah. Like, yeah. By, by the way, guys, we're both uh, we're both in our fitness programs right now, guys. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. It's, 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 it's a little gut in this blazer right now, but we gotta work on it. You know what I'm saying? It's gut out this blazer. <laughs> <laughs> no <You're> buttons here. <laughs> We are, we are we're we're getting on track though, man. We're using this last quarter to to do our best though, man. Get get in good shape though, and um, uh, I just want to say, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, of shape, uh, this podcast will be in in great shape with uh support from our awesome Patreon. Speaking of shape though, we want to get this podcast in the tip top shape. We can do that with your help. So if you don't mind supporting our Patreon, it's Patreon slash Chinadu. Uh, it'll be it'll be in the bio down there. Become a Patreon. Become one of uh, become a supporter of the, of the uh, podcast to get bonus episodes, additional content from our correspondents, and a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Those so of you guys will support five dollars a month. So five ten dollars a month. So we're looking for from you guys. On you get great content and you'll support a great cause. Support the fourth wall. All of our Patreons. Anyways, gonna throw, throw that out there. Anyway, support support fourth wall guys. But, take it uh, how you take it. Bring it back, and we'll give it right back. Boom. And, uh, but before we get out of here, though, because uh, we are going to wrap soon, though, we want to talk AEW with you guys. Yes, yes. I'm, I, I, I love those guys. Me too. I am, uh, Me too. I am loving this Cody and uh, Jericho angle. Yes. Um, I'm loving how the Young Bucks are helping putting over newer talent. Uh, Moxley. Oh, my God. Moxley. Dude. And this Kenny Omega situation. Um, like. This is, the, this, is the, this is what I wanted. Dean Ambrose to mm -hmm. me. I don't understand. And it's like now you have to sit and watch this guy be the top guy that he always needed to be in another company when all you had to do was listen and let him do what he needed to do. You know what's so funny about all of this? All of it as a whole? 
the entire all in, all out, double or nothing, AEW, all this could have been avoided mm -hmm. if you would have just let Cody stop being Stardust. Let him go back to being Cody Rhodes and put him in the world title picture. Not even win the belt, but just be in a contention because at that at that point, he's with the company for 10 years at that point. Mm -hmm. So at that point, he wants to be a WWE guy. Right. He's already been there for a decade. And this is after you've already insulted the uh, the uh, the Dustin versus Cody angle, which was a highlight. Yeah. Of double or nothing. It, it was nuts. If you have not seen that match, go see it. Amazing match. I haven't match. seen anything that good since Bret Hart and Austin. Yeah. And I will I will completely agree with you. That was the build up, the storyline. First of all, shout out to the Ian Abel band. That song Shoes that they used for that build up, great song. That build up was amazing. Let me tell you something. They they know how to create content. Yeah. To me, AEW with their content feels like what WWE used to be back in the '90s or early 2000s with their uh, their pay-per-view promos. Yeah, and, and like the they're uh, just doing it every day. Yeah, and like I, I remember, I feel like the last time WWE moved me with one of their video packages, I think it was like the Cree Sacrifice package mm -hmm. that they had. I think that's the last time they really just moved me. Yeah, they're, they're not picking. Um, good music anymore to do their promos. They're picking these generic songs, relying a lot on Michael Cole's voice. Yes. Uh it's yeah, it's not doing it's not it's not doing it. It's yeah. not doing it, man. It's it's not for me it's it, it doesn't cut the way what AEW is doing now. I'm waiting on them to use the baby shark thing for uh, Oh for my God. Man. <laughs> you gnats. I'm sick of the Nationals by the way, man. That's just the Houstonian in me, man. That's like their theme song up there, man. But congrats to the Nationals. I'm not Wait, they're using baby shark as their theme. That's their theme I song. I cannot take them serious. That's their theme song. So yeah, but uh but in terms of AW, um it, it is crazy for to to see who who Dean, this is who Dean Ambrose wanted to be in WWE the whole time. And it's who he needed to be. And he is, and, I, and like, and, and I mean, I can't confirm this over. They, they said lately, this is what he's pitched events for the longest. Mm -hmm. John Moxley, this guy who I used to be. The only thing that, like, with John Moxley that I'm not in love with is the new name of Dirty D's Paradigm Shift. I'm not in love with the name. I like Dirty D's better. Well, yeah, and the D, but the D's kind of went with Dean. Yeah, yeah. The Paradise Ship. I mean, but I like how he delivers it now. Yeah, oh, I, I, I think he was also called the uh, Death Driver at one point. New, New Japan's called the Death Driver, I think. Yeah. Or Death Rider. But I think, but... Uh, yeah, I kind of like that. Death yeah, Rider. Death Rider. But, but New Japan will not, won't let him use it, though, because, you know, they're right yeah. now they're not on good terms right now. So. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. AEW versus uh, New Japan. But I, but I have already their characters. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they kind of rated. The new they really Japan did. Program. And Ring of Honor. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I mean, but you, you can't blame the guys that are now on AEW that came from those places. No, you can't because we're giving you a WWE like stage to perform on. Yeah. If not, we like we are in the early stages. If by the time. AEW reaches the same lineage that WWE has. It's going to be no comparison. Yeah, it's good. It's not. Yeah, and to, and to give WWE credit though, in terms of how they marketed this, they were very smart in doing this in terms of putting NXT as their competition because what they've done is they have put it in the audience's mind. Even though AEW is a great brand, mm -hmm. they put it in the mind to where like, oh no, AEW isn't competing with Raw and SmackDown. They're competing with NXT. Yep. In reality. If they're pulling on great stuff that that rivals Raw SmackDown, if not be Raw SmackDown, but I but the way they they position it, it's chess it's chess not checkers. Yeah. You're putting your NXT characters on these other shows are going to pull those ratings. I'm curious to see what the ratings are going to be tonight for NXT. I honestly I'm I'm expecting a boost oh, because yeah. for me like not I want to see what Raw SmackDown are going to do retaliate. Like I'm waiting I'm waiting for that main event and you Ooh, just see. You a, think they're going to invade NXT? I think they should. As they should. And they full sell. I mean, and I mean, and the, and the way full sell set up, if they crop that, it's going to look, it is going to crop, it is going to fill that ring up. That crowd's going to go, full sell's a hot crowd. Yo, yes. Even if, you know, it's only like a thousand in there, they go crazy and they're going to blow you that hear every off. one of them. Yep. Every one of them, uh, their voices are heard and loud. Like, I, I prefer that crowd. Over these massive arenas yeah. that everybody's going to. Yeah, and, and and honestly, right now I'm more excited to see what's going to happen with NXT and like AEW. Although I'm going to watch both, mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see though. And like I'm just, I'm in, I'm I'm loving how they booked Cody Rhodes as a main eventer because he is. He is. He always has been. 
and, and look at him now. Like he, even his physique, he yeah. he's presenting himself. Like I am yeah. the guy. And and Brandy Rose is awesome. Like what she's doing right now, Awesome Kong. It is so dope. It's like she, she it's almost like she. I'm channeling this monster mm -hmm. to take care of these Barbies, these Beckys that I'm tired of seeing. Like that's how I read. It. I don't know if I'm reading it too deep as a black person, as a, as no, a black man, but no, I'm looking at it like I'm like. And Brandy's such a good heel because she is so diabolical. But we'll do with a smile on her face. You know, like, the, the the crazy thing is is how they are able to play the heel baby face situation between her and Cody. Yes. You know, the dynamic is very interesting. Because she's, she's, she's always going to be behind Cody, 110%. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I yeah, because like 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 Brandy's position is like, she's not coming off as like a nice person. Like, she's really coming off as like, yo, she's really... Gunning for all of you chicks oh, to yeah. let you know who's really running this though, and I love it. This is how Stephanie McMahon should be. Yeah, like like uh, more of a more cunning, less less overtly abusive. Yes, because like Brandy Rose can sell a look, like it's a look she gives her promos, okay, and she'll look the camera. I'll be like, y'all see that? Yeah, or it's just the fact that I like looking at Brandy. Yeah, she is a beautiful woman. Like Cody Rose, kudos to you. Okay, no, I love my baby. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I love. I ain't like cheating on I'm but, a single man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, well, uh, but disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer. I love my baby, but 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 Brandy Rose is, is is definitely a beautiful woman. I mean, and she's an amazing talent too, man. She's oh yeah. Very solid in the ring, and I mean, just like the way they put together this whole program, like they, like they made wins and losses mean a lot, though. Like the fact. When I see people lose, I start thinking like, oh man, their record. You don't do that, WWE. No. You don't do that. They, they could lose four and four straight and then it's, you know, they're no more contender mm -hmm. in a random battle royal. But in AW, it means a lot. Like Pac, like Pac was mad at Moxley for tr almost getting them DQ'd. He was like, dude, what are you, what are you thinking, man? We could lose this match because it yep. means something. Th that and that is, is key, you know, when you're just kind of passing off uh, count outs disqualifications as if they don't mean anything, which is what WWE yes. has a habit of doing, yes. then it's hard for a fan to really take it serious as a sporting situation. Yeah. Like, no, wins, losses mean something. Yeah, like and when Tony Khan told uh, John Moxley, this is going to be unsanctioned. If this is going to be an unsanctioned match, it's not going to go against your win or loss record. And, and it's like, what do you mean it's not going to go yeah. against my win or loss? If I beat his behind, I want it to count. It, it's got to count, and that added so much more to to, to like to like who to the win. Like, oh man, he really he wants this win for real, and it, mm -hmm. it, like, it, mean, it means a lot. That's why on Raw, when Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy went at it, the reason why nobody cared in that crowd because you have buried Cedric Alexander so much. Yeah, like, I, I didn't understand the fixation with burying Cedric. Uh, I, another thing I don't understand is the fixation with everybody wearing AJ Styles pants. I don't get it either. Everybody has AJ Styles pants, knee pads, yeah. kick pads. Yeah. It's like, why are you all wearing that now? But that's the young point. Yeah. But, but Cedric Alexander looks like the black AJ Styles. He does. <laughs> Everything, the gear and all that. And the gear looks cool. Mm -hmm. It looks cool even wrong, but, but AJ's already wearing it, you know? So. Yeah. And, and I must say, though, just to, to back to, to AW, though, that Chris Jericho is in a renaissance of his career. Like, this guy, oh, yeah. He's I mean. Man. But and he realizes he doesn't care. It doesn't matter what he does. Yeah, he can do this and it gets over. Yep, I, it was over. It got over. over. He just made the list. Over. Over the scarf. Over. over. Come on, this guy. And his his consistent repetitiveness. Yeah. And Le Champion. That's over. Over the bubbly. Yeah, the over bubbly. the bubbly. Paymaker. Over Judas effect, oh. whole new move. This guy's hitting fifty, and he's changed his whole move set to a point. Cause you know, like I, I know, I know he can't move or wrestle the same way he did as the Lion Tamer. Mm -hmm. and of course, that's nobody can. Okay, cause Jericho was out here moving like Mysterio at one point. Yeah, and like he can't do that anymore, especially when you're hitting fifty. But he has changed his move set up so it's so much more it's methodical. It's a pain maker style, you know, no pun intended, and he's killing it, man. Oh yeah, like he's oh, killing it. Uh... I'm, I want to see this full gear pay per view. I'm upset that it's not offered like a network kind of special. Yeah, I know. Because uh, yeah, coming up sixty bucks. Oh man. 
That's right, man, but but that's the thing I did not miss about pay per views. Yeah, man. I think the last pay per view I paid for was uh, what was it? WrestleMania thirty when Daniel Bryan when Daniel Bryan won and we were expecting CM Punk to show up. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I was I was sitting in my living room with my CM yeah. Punk T shirt and my belt. I. I I, I don't miss those days, man. With the network, nine ninety nine a month, I can do that. Really yeah. Like, and I think, I think, you, I think you can watch it. If you, have, if you have the Fight Network, I think you can you watch it. No, no, you, you still have to pay for it. You need, you need to have Fight Network, I think, right? I think. No, no. If you have the Fight Network, you should be able to watch it. So I, man, you know what? I don't understand how a company like AEW didn't see potential in YouTube TV. You know. I didn't. I don't understand it. Because um, every, when I tell you everybody has YouTube. And that's how they got. That's how they they got their notoriety through being the elite. Well, YouTube, YouTube. I just it just seemed like an easy move. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly, because to me too, like I feel like, and this is just my opinion, and in the terms of like buying wrestling pay per views, wrestling paying that much, it for me is outdated. Yeah. Like I, I like people will pay that to see Mayweather McGregor. They'll pay for that. And you, but you got to give us that kind of caliber of yeah. match. Yeah, and full gear. I'm excited to see it. But there's nothing that says Mayweather McGregor. No, not at all. Like not I don't even Mayweather Pacquiao. Sixty bucks, guys. Like, I mean, because I've been so used to now spending ten dollars a month. That's what it is too, though. Because they, because because it's not about the money to me like that. It's about like you know it, 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 the culture now has shifted my thoughts. Exactly. Ten dollars a month will get me all these pay-per-views that I used to spend 50 60 80 dollars on yeah it's a steal yeah and honestly too and like and on WWE's part without them realizing it that's gonna affect these pay-per-view sales though because like oh, yeah. I'm not expecting huge buy rates for these pay-per-views though and I'm like no disrespect to AEW at all but it's like like I mean just like that that audience though whatever like to, to spend that much on you you guys aren't you guys, you know, aren't on the level of WWE quite yet in terms of like, you know, who knows about you and things like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still, I'm still sure it's going to sell well. It's going to be a great pay per view. I can't wait to see the results of it. Nope. And overall, I'm so excited for AW, man. The Young Bucks, oh, their tag division, just on fire, man. Nuts. On Nuts. fire. I, I can deal without the Dark Order. I can't too. I can deal without those guys, but everybody else that they got. Orange Cassidy's hilarious. This guy. I, I love Orange Cassidy. This dude with his part. Is this Listen, one? bro. Orange Cassidy <laughs> got so much swag, it doesn't take that much effort yeah. for him to show it off. At first, I was like, why is Mac more than AW? But I was like, okay, okay, so Orange Cassidy, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, but it's, it's, it's. It's juicy. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. Nice. And, uh, and I feel on that note, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up, guys. Thank you for tuning in. To, uh, on that note. <laughs> yeah, on that note, uh, juicy. <laughs> we'll wrap up. Uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the fourth wall. Please uh, please follow us uh, on all social media platforms. The links will be available in the comments below. Please comment, like, share. Tell everyone about the fourth wall because we are here. Fourth wall in the building, okay? On behalf of myself, Elliot Gidry. Uh, this has been fourth wall, so thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time.